So here's a quick look at this um, really janky um, Raspberry Pi Frankenstein laptop. The goal here was to be incredibly cheap, um, have all the components not permanently modified so I can separate them, use them in other projects or use them how they were originally intended for. And just to have kind of a mobile workstation that I can use for uh, single board computers. So here we have is just your usual Raspberry Pi 4. This is a four gig model. Um, I did flash it with the latest EEPROM boot so I can boot it off of USB. This is a um, M2 SATA uh, SSD that I pulled from a HP 13-inch uh, laptop that I upgraded to one terabyte, so I just had this sitting around, so I stuck it in a cheap enclosure. And so boot off a of USB 3. I just have a Logitech uh, wireless keyboard with a touchpad. That's also about like 20, 25 bucks. Then I had this lying around, which is just a giant 20, like 2600 mAh battery with USB-C and also two USB ports that can power everything for, I would assume, many, many hours. Um, this case was 12 bucks on Amazon. It was just like an art, art case to carry art supplies, but it had a bunch of dividers that you can section off however you want. But I had to Dremel several pieces out just to make everything fit including using one of the dividers here that I taped two together with duct tape to kind of make this half height. I dremeled it like I cut it in half so that way it's half height so the cables can kind of sit above it. I also um, run some of the cables in and out just so they don't bend as much. Otherwise, I could have just dremeled this part out too, but decided not to. I drilled a couple of holes around the edges just for venting, but that's about it. Um, you really don't need any other tools besides I would recommend Dremel. I bought a cheap knockoff for like 50 bucks that was uh, wired that you plug in. So that usually works better than the battery powered ones. And then um, just drilled some holes uh, for some venting. <clears throat> so let's move on to, we have some bungee cables. That I'll show you what we use those for later on. I have some Velcro dots that I use to kind of attach everything so you could detach. This is a $110, 15.6 inch IPS uh, panel that can be powered off a of USB-C, which is great um, and cheap and it works quite well. I'm quite fond of it. You can use this obviously as a second screen for your laptop, your desktop, or with your Nintendo Switch or whatever you have planned. So we'll just Velcro this kind of on there for now and then we'll go open it. And then I have some more Velcro dots that I use to attach the keyboard. We'll just go ahead and attach that. And then just a micro HDMI to uh, mini HDMI for this monitor and then a USB-C cable for the power. And then on the side I have cutouts to plug in the power for the monitor into the battery and also for the Raspberry Pi 4. Reason I have exposed is because Raspberry Pi does not have a power switch. So this is the easiest way to turn it off and on completely and also save your battery time. That's also a way for you to charge the battery while leaving everything together if you so wish to. We are running Twister OS here. So um, this is a pretty cool OS you can check out. I'll leave links in the description that allows you to mimic the look of a Mac OS or Windows 10. I have it in Windows 10 version right now. It has uh, dual speakers, serial speakers on the back of the monitor, so you do have sound. Um, overall, it performs quite well. It performs better than in a, like an old cheap crap top 11 inch. I have an A3 11, E11. This actually scores better um, in the benchmarks. So for everyday use, it's pretty reasonable, especially when you're running it off of a uh, SSD versus the uh, micro SD card.